What's up guys? Hope you're having a great day. Uh, I know that I am. I'm just feeling blessed to be here, be alive, and be able to make this video for you guys. Um, as you can see from the title below, we're going to be talking about uh, judgment in the church and judgment that is wrongfully put out a lot of times and how we shouldn't judge people in the church. I was actually reading, uh, I was actually reading through the Bible today, reading, I can't really say a daily plan because I just kind of make it up as I go along, come up with my own thing, fill whatever I'm led to read that day is what I read. I have a hard time really following a devotional because there's days where it's like, I just want to read, 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 and then there's days where it's like, if I can just get one chapter in, I'm doing good. But um, when I was reading today, I ended up... Oops, Pages are stuck together from all the highlighting. Ended up in James. Uh, and I was reading through James 2. And it starts talking about judgment. And talking about prejudice against people. And I feel like a lot of times in the church we still see that today. We see a lot of prejudice. We see a lot of judgment. Um, especially elders. Not, not elders like elders in the church. But older people in the church judging youth coming into the church. Um, judging people that that are new and that may look different than what the church is used to seeing. Whether that's they've got tattoos, they've got crazy hair, they've got crazy clothes. Um, I feel like a lot of those people come into the church and get a cocked eye looked at them. And I mean, I'm guilty myself of judging people that are a little bit different than what the church norm is um, to me. But we've all been lost and we were all found. Um, we've all been at church for the first time. We've all been in a situation that we might not have understand. And we really shouldn't be judging these people and running them away from God because they're going to begin to think that God is judgmental. We're not called to be judgmental. We're not called to be a gatekeeper of the church. We're not called to tell people how they should look or how they shouldn't look at church. All we're supposed to do is preach the gospel, teach people, and try to build uh, a relationship with them to where God can enter their lives and work on them in His own way. We, we can't, we're not called to tell people how to dress and how to act and things like that right out the gate. If they've got questions, if they've got questions about why you dress or why you dress that way, or if they've been coming to the church now for, you know, a very long extended time and they, they seem to be getting more and more into church, but they've kind of not changed some of their personal habits, then maybe you can have a talk with them. But right out the gate, we were all there. We can't judge them, and you may be getting somebody new in the church that comes in with a, you know, a nice citizen watch and a nice suit on that looks almost tailored, and you know they look like they've got it all put together, but they could be one of the worst people you've ever met. Well, this guy, you know, he may have been in prison and he may be tatted up, but maybe he had an encounter that changed his life in prison, and now he's come to church and he's ready to give all that he has to Jesus. Those are two different people, but just because you judge that book by the cover, just because you looked at this guy and he looked all put together, you thought, that's the person that I'm going to go talk to and invite into my home. And since that guy that really is ready to give all that he has to Christ has a few tats and maybe looks a little bit rougher than what you're used to, you kind of don't go to him and try to help him out. So in turn, you end up just helping somebody there that maybe is just there for image or for any other reason. And I'm not condemning dressing nice when they first go to church or dressing bad. I'm just saying that we need to be the same to every person that walks into the church, no matter how they look or act, especially if this is a new convert. Because we don't know their life story, we don't know where they've been, and we don't know how much they understand about the Bible or if they've even read the Bible. Maybe they just were having a bad day Saturday or Sunday, or maybe they didn't even sleep that night, but they felt called to go to a house of God, and they chose your place of worship and your house of God to go and try to find out who Jesus really is, and you shouldn't run them off for that reason. We've all been broken. We are all broken still, but with the Holy Spirit we are made whole, and they have every right to that that you do. Um, so before I keep on going and roasting people, and trust me, I, my church is awesome. Uh, I've actually not been going to my church for maybe three years now, and I mean, I felt welcome from the moment I walked into the door, and I mean, most people around me were wearing suits and ties and you know, I'd grown up in churches where you didn't wear suits and ties all the time. That was like an Easter thing or like a like a big celebration thing is when you came in like that. And I didn't understand why everybody was dressed up so nice. But everybody welcomed me with open arms. I showed up in maybe a polo like this and uh, I think I had on dress pants. You know, but I didn't have a hat on. I had hair fixed like, you know, you do. But 
I didn't look like the norm of that church. But nobody acted different towards me. Nobody treated me bad. We all came together. But at the same time, I know that out of the full congregation that maybe somebody thought, what is this kid doing? Where's his suit? Where's his jacket? You know, why is he dressed like that? This is how we're supposed to dress to come to church. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that except that you've run the potential of running somebody off and scaring somebody away when in turn you should be inviting and inviting and inviting and being the kindest people because that's what we're called to be. We're not called to be judges. God is the ultimate judge. He's going to judge everybody on judgment day. That's not our place. Our place is to spread the gospel. Whether you're the preacher, whether you're a greeter, whether you're a teacher, or whether you're just somebody sitting on a pew, we're all called to spread the gospel. That's why I'm here making this video. I feel like this is where I've been called to be because we're all meant to be called just call to spread the gospel. Um, anyways, let me get into this verse real fast, and I think that's also going to help open up your eyes like it did me today. Um, I still try not to be judgmental, but this verse really like nailed it home for me today, saying like, I, let me just read it. I'm sorry. I'm not going to go too far into it without even getting into the verse. Uh, James 2 and 1, My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord, Jesus Christ, if you favor some people over others? For instance, the guy in the suit versus the guy with the tattoos. For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor, well, doesn't the discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? He goes on to say, in, five, in verse 5, listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom? He promised to those who love him. But you dishonor the poor. Isn't the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ's noble name that you bear? Yes, indeed, it's good when you obey the rule laws as found in scriptures, love your neighbor. But if you favor some people over others, you're committing a sin you are guilty of breaking the law. So, I really like where it says down here in verse 3, if you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you save the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor. Like, we need to realize in our churches that that rich person that doesn't know Jesus and that poor person that doesn't know Jesus need Jesus just as much, and maybe we should give up our seats to them if that's necessary, to give them the best seat in the house, give them the best opportunity to really see who God is, even God working through you by you being kind to them. Um, when you do something like that, and people aren't used to that nowadays, and they may begin to wonder, like, why is he acting like this? Why are they willing to give up their seats just to me? You know, I'm, I'm nobody. I'm this poor guy. Or even if that rich guy comes in and sees that, that's not how the world works, and people know that, and they'll realize that you're different, and it's because of God and the Holy Spirit working through you. Um, now I feel like it's also good to know that it is sinful to judge somebody. It's a sin when you look at somebody and you treat them differently because of how they look or because you think that they're different than you. We're all created equal. We're all equal in God's eyes. Um, when it comes to forgiveness, sin is equal. God will forgive their sin just like He forgave your sin. And they need God just as much as you needed God on that day. And you still, like I said before, you don't know their backstory. Um, and you just don't know where they've been. So I hope this video will help you guys to next time somebody comes up to you, even outside of church, that maybe you would have looked down upon before or maybe you wouldn't have wanted to help because of what they looked like. I hope this will help you to maybe look at them in a different light and realize that you may have been a little judgmental in the past and that you need to embrace them and open arms and just show them the love of God through you and help them to come to God because ultimately we're all searching for something and I truly believe that the something that everybody feels like they're missing and everybody feels like they're searching for is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I hope this video has helped you guys. If it has, please hit that like button and share it with somebody that you know. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. Uh, was this video good? Did you agree with my points? Did you disagree? Do you think that there's something else that I don't understand? Please let me know in the comments below and I'd love to have a discussion with you. Be sure to check out our website, thefamilylife.com. I'll have it linked in the description below. If you liked this video, then you're going to love a lot of the stuff that we've got going on over there. And just be sure to subscribe to this channel because we've got more great content coming out all the time. And I just really appreciate you guys watching this video all the way through. Anyways, have a great rest of your day and God bless.